Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to give you a tour of the files that make up the K3NG Arduino CW keyer. I hope this will help you out when you're initially configuring your keyer code and uh, changing settings, getting all the features that you would like, and uh, perhaps if, if you unfortunately have any issues, if you need to do any debugging, how to do that. I have up on the screen uh, Microsoft Visual Studio Code. I use this program to do all my development. It's just easier to use than the uh, Arduino IDE, unfortunately. Everything that I show you in here applies to the Arduino IDE. Here, here's what it looks like in the Arduino IDE. It opens all of the files at once, and you can access any of the files that I'm talking about here with that little pull down. This is actually one an annoying feature. You can't close out individual files in a project. It loads them all at once, and it's a bit hard to navigate. So that's, uh, that's one reason why I use Microsoft Studio Visual Code rather than the Arduino IDE. So let's get to it here. The first file, the main file that you're probably aware of is k3ngkeyer.ino. This is the main file where all the code, all the magic happens. In the beginning of the file, you're going to see a lot of comments. There's a lot of notes in here. This is all covered in detail on the GitHub wiki, but I also keep notes up here for quick reference for you and, and for myself. It's easy for me to scroll up here and see what certain commands are. It's very convenient. There are some notes here about the USB key. Board. Again, the wiki is really the definitive source for information on the features. And then you'll see the, uh, the revisions that uh, have taken place in the last several years. This is actually getting quite lengthy. And here you can see the last update that was made. So we're currently operating on version uh, 2024 2601. You can probably figure out the format of this version. It's year, month, day, and then a serial number. If I do multiple pushes to GitHub on a day, I just increment this serial number at the end here. Some more notes here. And then you can see right here, this is the code version that we're running. This is what shows up in various displays and everything. So that number will always correspond with this last revision update up here. One thing to note here, EEPROM magic number. Like the note says here, you can change this number and have it reinitialize the EEPROM. This is what I use when I add a new variable that's written to EEPROM. And I need to have uh, EEPROM cleaned out when you load a new version of code. So you'll see this number increments, so like the next time a variable is added, that'll go to 38. And you'll know this when you compile the code and upload it to your Arduino. You'll hear that beep boop, beep boop, beep boop. That means that the unit did a factory reset. It saw that the EEPROM magic number had changed, so it knows that it needs to clean out EEPROM and initialize it. Same factory reset that happens if you boot up your CW keyer with both of the paddles depressed. It does the same factory reset. I'm not going to go down through the, uh, the rest of the code. That'll probably be in a future video where I can get deeper into the structure of the coding and everything. But that's not the purpose of uh, this video here. The next file to be aware of is keyerhardware.h. This is where you can enable various hardware profiles that are pre-configured. A lot of these are for various kits and circuit boards that have been released over the years, some commercial offerings, uh, and this is really for convenience. If you want to use one of these pre-configured hardware profiles, like uh, let's say you, you have a Yak, I think that's how you pronounce it. You would just uncomment that and compile, and it would use different configuration files. And it notes over here the three files that it uses for pins, features, and options, and settings. It's really the same concept with all these. They just have their own individual files. If you don't uncomment any of these hardware profiles, you'll use the three default files, which are keyer settings.h, keyer features and options.h, and keyer pin settings.h. So it's very simple. You don't have to touch this here if, if you're building your own your own keyer, you're not using one of these commercial or offerings or kits that uh, folks offer. You don't have to touch this file and you can just t stick with these three default files. So we'll go with Let's see, we'll, we'll start here with uh, keyer features and options. This one you'll probably want to touch because this is this will determine the personality for your keyer, what functionality is in there. You'll see two main things in here. You'll see defines that are features 
and you'll see options. Features, naturally add features, and options usually change the behavior of features or change the behavior of the keyer. When you add a feature, when you uncomment it, it adds more code in that's compiled, so it takes up more memory. The more features, the bigger your compiled file is going to be. And this is important, especially if you're using an Arduino Uno or Nano. They have limited memory. Every device has a finite amount of memory, but the Unos and Nanos are the smallest in the family. And if you start adding features, you're going to bump up against the limits of that. That's why we highly recommend that you use an Arduino Mega or a, a similar um, variant that has, uh, has more memory to um, accommodate the features. If you're using a Mega, you can uncomment every one of these features except for like LCD. You're only going to want to have one type of LCD display if you do that. But you can actually compile everything and have it all run on a Mega. So I can't stress enough, get, get a bigger Arduino if uh, you really want to get the full functionality from the uh, Arduino CW keyer. So you just uncomment the features that you want. Command buttons, that's a common one. Command line interface memories, memory macros. Uh, I'm not going to go through what each of these features do. That'll be in a future uh, video. Comments over here are your friend, uh, friends, and uh, the wiki goes into detail on these features. So you really need to consult the wiki if you want, want details on, on how these operate and you know what the associated um, settings and pins are for these individual features. Highly recommend that when you're starting out with the keyer, start with a small subset of features, or don't even add these features here. Just compile it, upload it, make sure that the basic keyer functionality works, and then add the features one by one and get them working. That, that's usually the best way to go about this, because if you try to add everything at once, you might be a bit overwhelmed getting familiar with um, pins to use and what settings. So, you know, take, take things in, in baby steps, and uh, you'll get to where you want to be with the functionality. Options, as I mentioned, these tend to change the behavior of features or may change the default behavior of the keyer. Again, there's comments over here. You'll also see these options mentioned in the wiki. The next file that you're probably going to be concerned with is keyer pin settings. This is what maps the hardware pins to functionality in, uh, in the code. Uh, for example here, your paddle connections, you're definitely going to want these. Um, your left paddle, right paddle, pins 2 and 5 are what are used by default. The, the pin numbers here will correspond with the various schematics that you'll find in the wiki. You can change these. If there are any limitations on these, like if it's a, a pin that involves a, a, an interrupt, there may be limitations based on whether you're on a Uno or a Mega. But otherwise, if there's no note here or anything, you can pretty much use um, any pin you like. Um, Potentiometer, naturally, that is an analog reading, so that has to be on an analog pin. You'll see this on, on A0 here. You can't have a, a, an analog read on a um, digital pin. If a pin is set to zero, that means it's disabled. It may be referred to in the code, but it won't do anything. It won't break anything, no harm, no foul. Just put a zero in there, and that pin is essentially deactivated in the code. And uh, down through here, you'll see various pins that relate to certain features, uh, like here for the command buttons. Pin uh, A1 is for our multiplexed command buttons. And uh, you'll see here that if you enable feature command buttons over in feature and options, that enables these defines here. So that, that's why you see if defs around various, uh, various pin definitions here. All kinds of pins in here. So again, don't keep in mind you don't have to stick to the, the the pins that are assigned here and in the schematics. If you want to remap things based on your needs, go ahead and do it. Like I said, really the big limitations are just analog pins need to be analog read functionality needs to be in the analog pins, and if there's an interrupt uh, that's involved in the code with like I think the PS2 keyboard, you need to use a certain subset of pins for that. Another file you may want to look at is keyer settings, and this is a whole plethora of settings, default settings and other you know, behavioral settings on the keyer, such as uh, the factory default settings here, like what your, your keyer will start up with uh, when it's been factory reset, 26 words per minute, uh, 
command mode speed. We set that a little bit lower to 20. Uh, side tone frequency, 600 hertz is my favorite, so that's what's in the code. Again, not going to go down through the, each one of these. Uh, that'll probably be a future video as well. But again, the documentation, the wiki and the, and the, uh, the GitHub is really what you need to be looking at uh, for these settings. Don't be afraid to experiment. Uh, you're not going to make your Arduino blow up, catch fire, or emit smoke or anything. But uh, you know, don't be afraid, afraid to play around in here. The last file that uh, I'll address here in this video is kierdebug.h. This is when you're having problems or perhaps you're using a new software release and uh, you're experiencing some bugs. Myself or others on the Radio Artisan Groups IO support group may ask you to go in and uncomment one of these debugs, recompile, upload it to your Arduino, and uh, go into Serial Monitor and uh, perform certain actions and capture the debug logs and post them to the group so we can see what's going on. All kinds of debug options in here. If you want to see what a particular one does, you could just select the text here, go over to your INO file and search for that text and you can find the portion of code. You can see where we're generating those debug messages and understand um, what they're doing, what they're saying. There's no detailed documentation on each one of these. It would take forever you know, to write that, and we really only use these when there's uh, you know, something going wrong. So you're not really going to find anything in the wiki other than this file exists and these are the debug options. But uh, needless to say, it's, uh, it's really easy to uh, compile these in. Again, uncomment that particular line, recompile, upload it to the unit, and when you're done doing the debugging, absolutely highly recommend going back in, commenting that back out, and recompiling and uploading it to your Arduino. I would not operate a, um, a CW here with any of these debug options enabled. This is really for diagnostics. Each one of these takes up memory uh, because there's a lot of code around it, uh, text strings that consume memory and everything. So I hope this uh, video helps you in uh, configuring your K3NG Arduino CW keyer. And as always, if you have any questions or need any support, please join the groups.io radio artisan group and myself or others can uh, help you out. Thank you.